Yo, welcome back again to Women's Watch Show. If you are just joining us, here yeah, we use the breakthrough moment, a word of a successful woman to inspire and motivate you. We measure success not by the amount of money in your pocket, but by the effort you make on daily basis to achieve your goal. It has really been a good one with me here in the old studio and um, it's, it's Georgina Onoha, the Nollywood sweetheart. Today we are talking about sex trafficking and now I want to bring it down to the madams. You know, when I, I, I say the madams, you find out that it's actually Africans yeah. that Nigerians. enslave, Nigerians. yes, Nigerians, Africans, it's fellow Africans, fellow Nigerians mm -hmm. that enslave each other. You know, to, to, that brings them to to Europe. What? Yes, but do you think that have they experienced that? Have, were they sex trafficked, and then at some point they got this balance? Seventy percent of them have yeah. been trafficked themselves. So you can start a trade you don't know about. Exactly. You know, so um, it's unfortunate. Like the. The Libya crisis we were talking about, yeah. I had a lot, about eight or ten girls reach out to me currently in Italy. Yeah. They were not only giving me their names, yeah. they were pointing out the names of the madams on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And they were like, this is the name. And when you go there, you see a girl, like, okay, you're living in Libya. They said, this is the person who sold me. So my own thing was to get all those information and pass mm -hmm. them to the FBI. And so most often the FBI goes right into um, with Interpol's. Yeah. It's it's sad, whereby you can sit and traffic your fellow human being, holding them, you know, hostage, demanding this amount of money, yeah, putting them. The, it's the, it's the, sickening. Yeah, like that program that I saw, they sh they show that if you don't, they, the girls were saying that the, they got threatened that if you don't pay or if you, got, if you don't go out to work, that they will kill your parents. So what do you think these girls should do? You know, like I said, to most of them that reached out to me from Italy, some still in Libya. Yeah. You know, I said, it is the tactics. They use what we call the fear tactics. If you have a way of leaving that place, go straight to the authorities. In any country, when you voluntarily, like I know of America, say, hey, I'm being held hostage here. The authorities will invest. They will give you immunity. They will give you asylum. They will protect you. Well, your parents you. are back in Nigeria where this woman can then just when, easily. When, no, when you do that, then you make them understand the imminent danger your immediate family members are facing back home. Right. Trust me, they themselves don't want to risk anything. Right. Because if they do, they will get them. You and I know Nigeria is a, uh, had which word? <laughs> yeah. in, it's a... Um, it's a jungle, let me put it that way. There are no rules of law. Yeah. Anybody can wake up and lynch anybody and do anything. So, but I say to them, nobody will want to go fight your mother in their village. Nobody will. But you know, the truth is, I, I will tell you this. I, I, will, I will not put myself in the situation to start with. But if I get threatened, you know, you just to say, okay, my mother, once you just mention her, bless your soul, mama. You know, once you just mention her, I'm panicking. I want to do whatever you want me to do, just so you let her be, you know, that thing. And it's not like I'll put myself in that position of being convinced of a better life. But, so. I agree with you. But you should know that that is one of their tactics, to threaten you, I will kill your mother, your father. Your, they're not going to do no jack. You and I know that. Because they know once you're able to escape, you can give leads to the authority mm -hmm. that could lead to their arrest. They don't want to equally gamble, kill somebody because of you. They might easily lynch you or kill you. But trust me, they won't want to leave the shores of Libya or Italy to go kill some family because you're not paying me money. No, they, so that's just what we call the use fear tactics. Yeah. So, you know, you are speaking in the angle of a person who is polished, I would say, and, <laughs> and, and we are looking at girls who are, who are really struggling back in Nigeria. And um, they, they come to that point where you say this thing and they just want to do it because they want to. Yeah, it, well, they, yes. So, but mind you, 
most of them are not being told exactly what they're coming to Europe to do. Exactly. They promised them a better you're life. You're going to go work. Like you guys have a program here in mm. Denmark. Is it the up here or whatever? Okay. You can up here. You mm. can get someone to come. So they could come and tell you, I'm okay, coming to this. Like getting help and everything yeah. people do it's a it's legal here in denmark mm. but some people will still want to exploit that mm. i mean i've seen cases of nigerians who go to india or china to go work they end up you know they end up being killed and their um, vital organs extracted to be sold in the black market mm. the same thing if you see how most nigerians or africans are being treated mm in Middle East, in Arab countries. Yeah. You're worth nothing. So anybody can fall victim. I mean, the issue of sex slave, like I said to you yesterday when we were talking, it is not how educated you are. I have seen educated people who equally fall prey and victim. I could invite you and say, come, you know, I want you to do this. I have this organized yeah. registered. Mm. You come in, I take your passport and I lock you up. Well-educated people have fallen victim of sex trafficking. Yeah. So it's not limited to uneducated people. Yeah, sure. You know, so um, what I would say to any young girl out there, the grass is not always green out there. Yeah. Do your best back home. Some day fortune might smile on you. And I say to people, if you have a small business in Nigeria, register it. The reason why most people don't get visas is because their documents are not in order. Yeah. If you get everything, I mean, I'm, I've been sewing clothing and everything for almost 10 years. My company is not registered. Yeah. Then when I want to go to paper, I go and do what we call Oluwole counterfeit <laughs> product to yeah. go. No, they're not idiots. They will check it and say, if you have any business you're doing, it takes you nothing to register it and get that number. Gather your papers. Nobody will say no to you when you go for a visa. In African society, our parents, some parents, so, mm -hmm. parents have this tendency to make it that it's your responsibility to take care of me as a parent, you know, and, it, and we all, some family grew up in that thing that I have to take care of my parents. And with that pressure on your head, you, know, you just want to do anything to meet up the expectation. You know, um, I live, I've lived in America for over 13 years. Yeah. It's a different ball game. Sure. But you and I come from a society where they believe it takes a community to raise a child. Mm. We live a communal life, you know. So, and um, it's our responsibility to care for our parents, yeah. just like they did to us. But it will be disheartening for any parent to subject their child to anything that will want to push that child to start thinking to do things that are insanely crazy, you know. But then it maybe it, starts, it has to start from the parents. They need to start saving up something for themselves. But the question becomes, what has the fate of most of our parents been? We've always had a socioeconomic and political system in Nigeria that favors the 1%. Exactly. It's either you're rich <laughs> or you're poor. We used to have middle class in the 70s and 80s. It is gone. Yeah. So we have a bunch of rogues as leaders. Yeah. So they leave us in desperation. I mean, and the, the pressure from social media is also adding to the problem we have. You know, that's actually a very good one because there's this pressure. Everybody, when you, every, once you open the Instagram, everybody is carrying designer and people want to meet up standards. Young people have this thing, the image of how life should be but which is not really how it is and that's the pressure of wanting more than they could actually have or afford. I, I say to anybody I don't live by societal norm and don't let yourself conform to the standard of anybody's definition of rich or famous or whatever yeah. you know like you said um, most of us in showbiz are doing the service, a disservice to our younger generation. Mm. I work so hard in America. I work over 12 hours each day. Mm. And I don't think, and as a single parent, I have two kids potentially going to Harvard University. I don't think I want to count my $8,000 to go buy a Gucci bag. Mm. That would be very ridiculous because I work so hard. No, but if you, if you are given, you take it. 
If it's a gift, it's different. Okay. And but for me to it. take my hat and money to yeah. go buy that mm -hmm. is the height of being irresponsible. Mm -hmm. So I want to tell every young girl out there, most of the things you see on social media is fake. Thank you. Do not live by nobody's standards because you don't know what most of these people, I mean, when we say entertainers, for crying out loud, how many movies do we all shoot in a year? How much are you being paid? And then you're flying in Paris, uh, business first class. class. Well, I don't even understand why you have to show your business class trip. You know, this thing has a thing to show, to make the young people think, I must fly a business class. It is wrong. We, we pass the wrong message. And we put young Nigerian youths under undue pressure. They will think, okay, what are you doing differently that, that they can't do? But they're, they're not understanding the fact that most of you have to do promiscuous things behind closed doors to afford that Gucci bag, to afford that first class. No, it's not your heart and money. Most of you are dating politicians. Most of you are dating married men. Yeah. Most of you are what we call aristos, <laughs> which are, what do we call them, bimbos or escorts. Bring, bring it girl. Most of you are escorts. You so know what? Hold that talk because I need these juices getting down here. But we will have to go for a break and we'll be right back. So grab your coffee and come on back. If you are just joining us, this is Women's World, where we use the word of a successful woman and their breakthrough to inspire and motivate you. It has really been great with Georgina Onoha, and it has really been a very good one and juicy one, and I cut you short in between it, but I still want you to bring it good. So give, us, give it to us. No, the truth of the matter is this. As an actor, mm. in the 90s and early 2000s, when I was very active in showbiz, in movie making, mm. nobody paid you up to one million mm. naira. Then there was even the market. But now the market is not there. Mm. Only a few of my colleagues are doing film selling in cinema. But even at that, the cinemas take almost 60% of your profit. Right. And why the rise, they don't even invest anything. So how much are you making? Fine, you're all getting an endorsement. You want to live in like a VGC? Why do you want to go live where you know in the next 20 years you can sustain that, in, that you know, same standard. standard of yes. living? You're putting most of these young girls or boys under undue pressure. And if they cannot meet up with you, they think the next thing is either take to crime or into prostitution. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, they don't know you yourself. You're an executive escort. Sorry, maybe let me put it politely. <laughs> it's, the, it's just the truth. How often do you shoot films? Mm -hmm. How much are you being paid? How much is it you can afford? You're wearing a Rolex. How much is your Rolex? <laughs> How much is a first class ticket? How much then are you making? Yeah. So whereby what you gross in does not compare to what you spend or the facade you put out there. Georgina, I would love to continue this conversation, but my guys are already blinking eye and it's almost time. <laughs> but before we let you go, we need to know a little bit secret behind this beautiful Georgina Onoha. What was the most embarrassing thing that, is there any embarrassing thing that have, have happened to you that you embarrassed to talk about? We want to know a little My bit. divorce. I saw it as a failure on my part because mm. I really believe in marriage, family. And it did hit me bad because, I mean, as a young girl, you marry this young doctor. This is your dream, family yeah. and everything. And you just watch everything crumbling. So it took me four years for people to even know that my marriage had since ended. Mm. You know, and I only came out or released a statement because my sister-in-law was threatening to out me. Really? So, I said, okay, I would not Great. want nobody to tell my story. Yeah. I have children to protect. Marriage might end, but true friendship ends. Why so did you hold it for that long? I wanted to heal personally. Right. You know, I don't have privacy, but the privacy I can have is what I create. Sure. People see you out there, they think, they know. no, no, you don't know me. My private, personal life, I keep behind. So I wanted to heal privately. I wanted my children to heal. I didn't want anything going around. I wanted to shield them. Exactly. You know, so when I started getting all those calls from newspapers, we heard, I just said, okay, I think it's time someone has just 
<laughs> so that's the only time I've been embarrassed in my life. Oh. Aside that, I've had a pretty good life. Thank you. That's really very nice to know and it's good for you to share. But before we let you go, we like to give you the presence of the show. This is a symbol to show that you have shared a part of you with us to inspire someone out there. Thank you so much for coming. It's your presence and you go home and have a cup of tea with it. <laughs> it's lovely. Thanks Thank for having me. Sure. We are so glad that you came. I'm so glad that you came in this. It has really been an interesting one with judging on her. She is really amazing. I hope you have picked something out of it. If you're a teenager, an adult, whatever you are, just know that you are not to be pressured. Don't let anyone put you in the path that you don't want to go to. Don't accept any of us that are very irrelevant because you alone have the right to your future thank you so much for watching for more information about my guests please go to www.womenswatchshow.com and i love you for watching